Welcome, it's Dinom. So the USA crypto regulation proposal just came out and I have it in front of me. We're going to take a look at exactly what it is, some of the side effects, as well as we're going to take a look at the prices and some predictions I have for the prices as well. And also, if you are not from the United States, this still affects you because this is uh, targeted for the companies that deal inside the United States. So it's not only for the United States citizens. So you uh, are also affected. Anyway, we're currently here on the uh, department of the treasury website, treasury.gov. And the proposal, as you can see from the title, it is aimed at closing anti-money laundering regulatory gaps on cryptocurrencies. And currently they're still only requesting comments and on the proposed requirements. So currently you have 15 days here for to get the comments from all interested parties to help inform the scope of any future regulatory actions should be submitted within 15 days. So you still have 15 days to basically complain and give feedback on this regulation here. And let's just talk about what it actually is. So we're talking about convert uh, cryptocurrencies, basically just uh, the legal terms for cryptocurrencies. And this only uh, uh, is about banks and money service businesses, so not individuals. But I would personally consider DeFi projects as money service businesses as well, because in my opinion, money service business is like if you uh, get a, uh, any mobile application that deals with cryptocurrencies, so you are actually transacting with cryptocurrencies, I would consider that as a money service business, just by the name money service business, because they are providing a service with money. So I would consider DeFi businesses as money service businesses as well. So anyway, everyone would be required to submit reports and keep records and verify the identity of customers in relation to the transactions. Uh, and also involving wallets not hosted by a financial institution, also known as unhosted wallets. So if you have a DeFi wallet and uh, you send money from Coinbase to your DeFi wallet and then you transact on the blockchain, uh, on the DeFi exchanges, decentralized exchanges, uh, you will be... Uh, of the exchange would have to give your KYC information to the government, basically. So <clears throat> the goal here, before we go to the details, is that they want to welcome responsible innovation, including new technologies that may improve the efficiency of the financial system and expand access to financial services. They want to increase transparency and close loopholes that malign actors may exploit. And this is also intended to protect national security, assist law enforcement and increase transparency while minimizing impact on responsible innovation. So those are the goals of this regulation here. So keep that in mind when we go forward. So here now we go to the details. So the requirements here for banks and money service businesses is to propose a reporting requirement for cryptocurrencies and digital assets whenever a transaction exceeds $10,000 in value. So some say that it's one tra transaction that is more than 10,000 or a day, one day's worth of transactions is worth more than 10,000. Then they will actually have to file an actual report for the government whenever, whenever that happens. But further, this proposed rule would require banks and money service businesses to keep records of customers, uh, cryptocurrency transactions and their counterparties as well, including uh, verifying the identity of their customers. And <clears throat> this is the important part here. If a counterparty uses an unhosted wallet or otherwise covered wallet and the transaction is greater than $3,000. So what this means is that if you withdraw money from, let's say, Coinbase on January 10th, for example, uh, let's say that's $5,000. And that's the only transaction you did with that exchange that day. There's no report currently. But when you go to the uh, Uniswap with your DeFi wallet and you swap that money to, let's say, whatever new altcoin that is out there that just came out or launched, uh, and you spend that $5,000, then the bank will or the exchange will have to uh, give your KYC to the government and report that transaction to the government as well. So that's the required requirement there. And what this means is this, that the exchanges and the money service businesses will basically have to flag your private wallet for any transaction that you do and report anything that is over $3,000. Or, I mean, keep a permanent record whenever it's more than $3,000. And whenever it's more than $10,000, then they will actually have to file a report for that. 
So those are the important numbers here. Anyway, this includes the following, what information they have to give to the government, your name, your address, uh, the type of cryptocurrency, the amount, the time of the transaction, the US dollar value of the transaction at the time, as well as some payment instructions, as well as your name and your physical address in the real world of each counterparty. So that's quite interesting. Uh, other counterparty information the secretary may prescribe. So it could be more information besides what is included here. So if they want to ask more information, then they can just add it on the form. So people are required to file whatever they want. <laughs> but basically, it gives them open hands to do whatever they want. Any other information that uniquely identifies the transaction, the accounts, and to the extent reasonable, reasonably available, the parties involved, and any form relating to the transaction that is completed or signed by the financial institution's customer. So a lot of information that the exchanges have to keep tab tabs on. And I, I believe with this one, whenever your account basically gets flagged, uh, that you did an exchange, if you did a transaction with Coinbase, indefinitely they will have to keep monitoring your account. So let's say you create an account on Kraken and Coinbase and let's say like Binance, all of those three companies would have to keep a permanent record of your DeFi transactions on your wallet. If you withdraw money from the Binance or if you send money to Binance, they will have to do the KYC for you and track your wallet from that point onwards. So basically your wallet will get like a red tag forever. Uh, companies will have to comply with that. Of course, it's a little bit cumbersome. So now let's talk about the actual side effects and what it actually means for individuals and companies as well going forward. So here to some of my speculation. So first, let's talk about a person starting a DeFi or crypto business, which would be classified as a money service business, in my opinion. Uh, well, you have to comply with the KYC rule and you probably will need a money service business license as well. So if you want to run a DeFi pro uh, protocol out there uh, and you're working or you are a US based citizen, you're pro probably doing something illegal unless you comply with all of that. So you will need a lot of capital to get started with anything because uh, it takes a lot of effort to have this KYC process because you need real people looking at your KYC stuff before they can approve it. So you need a real department of people actually taking a look at it. So it's super, super hard for anyone to, in the United States to actually start anything uh, if you just have an idea. Like let's say you're one person and you want to start sushi swap that would be probably illegal as well. Anyway, uh, a person currently working in a DeFi project. So if you're working in a DeFi project right now, which doesn't do KYC, I believe this would affect that you would be working with uh, an illegal company or a illicit money service business. Uh, that's just what I would expect them to do if they want to enforce this. They would try to crack down people uh, who are like leading figures of different DeFi protocols who do not follow this KYC ruling here. I think there will be some crackdowns going on at some point if they want to actually enforce this. So if you're working on a DeFi project uh, and you're in the United States, that could be a little bit bad for you. And also, I, I already know that France and Netherlands and I think Switzerland have already similar laws in place currently in their countries. So it's not not great there either. And this is just growing as well. Then the next un unintended consequence is that I believe there will be a black market for mules. So I will uh, draw this so you can understand it. So let's say uh, this is the exchange here. And whenever you send money to your private wallet from the exchange, uh, you will have to do KYC on this one. So this one will get a red flag permanently. So they will keep a record of whatever is happening with this wallet here forever. And next, what you can probably do if you're a smart tax evader or a smart criminal, you will probably want to have a secondary wallet. So you probably want to have a wallet like this. Uh, sorry, I okay, not like that. Sorry about the mistakes here. I love painting stuff. Anyway, you have the exchange here, then you have your red wallet here, like a hot wallet or whatever you would want to call it, uh, that they keep a track on. But when you tr send money to this wallet, which is a white wallet, you can do the DeFi stuff here and there will be no records as far as I know. I don't think they will need to keep a record of every single transaction that you do here and then 
mark these as red as well. I believe this one will be white. So I believe if you want to do DeFi stuff, uh, this is just a step that you probably want to take just so there's less information given from you to the government. And also, I don't know, I always, I, it's, it's not illegal to do this because this regulation does not involve individuals. So I would just do this anyway if I were a person. But if uh, there's uh, somebody who is running a criminal network or if you are a really smart tax evader, uh, this is probably what people will want to do. So they will want to run a mule network. So right now, I know there are already some uh, mule networks out there. <laughs> I'm personally not using those, but uh, I've been watching some videos on YouTube about, about this stuff. So anyway, what you can do is get a homeless person and you give them like $100 or $500 or something like else, something like that, and they open an account in a bank. And then you just have access to that bank account and you can do whatever you want with the bank account. And because it's a homeless person, basically no one really cares about that. So anyway, that that can happen there, but you can also do that with an exchange. So you give a little bit of money to someone to give their KYC papers and then you get the exchange account and uh, you just create this hot wallet there, but then you send money to another wallet. So that's an extra step. So I will believe that there will be a black market for mules to basically give their KYC for illicit purposes, but they get a little bit of a reward. So it's people who are in desperate situations as well. So it's a, it's a, it's creating a black market for mules, uh, in my opinion, because this is already happening with the traditional finance. So whenever there's a crackdown on like a trillion dollar uh, criminal network crackdown on a, on a central bank or something like that, there's always so like these mules do, do mule networks anyway that's just something that uh, i think some people will try to uh, do something like this and now the next un unintended or intended consequence is that i think power will be concentrated to established entities because right now if you're a bank you have to have a full compliance uh, department or a full kyc department and everything like that Adding two people to work on a crypto is no big deal. Like, I think most of the transactions and the reporting will be automated. So it will not be a big issue for <clears throat> companies to set automated alerts, automated reporting and all that to the government. So I think that's how it will work. But for a startup, you have to have a full KYC department, actual people looking at those KYC stuff. But if you're already doing it and you're an established company, no problem. But just for a startup to do it in a proper manner to manage all the KYC stuff so that the personal information doesn't get leaked. So you can get into trouble for that as well. And if it's not managed in a proper way, you could get into trouble as well. So if you're just wanting to start a business, uh, it's not that easy in the United States. And also another unintended consequence, by the way, is that probably businesses do not want to transact in United States. So whenever you see like, okay, we do not accept people from United States, I think you will see more of that as well going forward. So just because it's much easier to not comply with all that BS basically. So those are some unintended consequences. And next, uh, illicit money service businesses. So if you are working on a DeFi project out there, uh, you could be working in an illicit money service business, right? So I think there will have to be some crackdowns going on to actually enforce this. Because if they don't have any crackdowns, then this is pretty much useless uh, regulation. Only people who want to comply will comply. So I do think some people will be uh, 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 yeah, uh, affected at least. So the more these red wallets are out there and the more these red wallet transactions are being looked at by the uh, governments and so forth, I think if you are in the United States and you just try to avoid all of that, it will be harder because at some point you will have to uh, transact with these people who actually have done their KYC. So it will be harder to become anonymous on the DeFi as well if you transact with people there because you are not 100% sure if they have actually been flagged with their wallet as well. So yeah, it, it can be a little bit interesting. <laughs> Anyway, uh, finally, institutional investors. Uh, this is probably the intended consequence that uh, this whole thing gives is that institutional investors have a framework now 
how to work around these situations. And when this proposal actually goes into law, that's when they can start finding more loopholes. This is just like a basic loophole. But if you're a company, you're always trying to save on taxes. If you're a company, you are always trying to evade all everything. Like if you're a company, your business is to pay as little tax as possible. <laughs> That's your main goal, basically. And to maximize your revenue as well, minimize the overhead and, and, and so forth. So they want to min max their profits, of course. So institutional investors, whenever this goes uh, live, I think they will be happy to see more regulation. They are not really that interested in working with the DeFi stuff either. Uh, institutional investors, they just want to have regulatory things in place and the things be uh, understood and they want to have ways to go around it legally and find ways to go around it legally as well. So. I think institutional investors will be happy about this and probably that's why the prices haven't been falling. So now let's talk about the prices. So the prices here, if we take a look at this one, uh, the, let's talk, talk about the market cap. The market cap, uh, the, the price changes based on market cap, not really big difference on the 24 hours. So almost everything is still green. I didn't see any uh, uh, trend here that DeFi coins were going down or some other coins were going down so bitcoin ethereum has been holding their places here so this is pretty good and if you take a look at the losers uh i didn't see any clear trend here some DeFi projects out there yes uh xio token for example uh swap is a little bit down compound is a little bit down but not a clear trend because if we take a look at like uniswap uniswap it's up by seven percent so yeah uh not a clear trend in my opinion so the FUD is not really working <laughs> as a FUD so I don't think the prices currently will be going down but if they actually will start if this goes live and people will understand the exact implications of this uh, I'm just speculating on the unintended consequences here but when the actual proposal goes live if it stays like this and they will actually start doing some crackdowns of people working in DeFi and DeFi projects and so forth. And let's say there's, uh, let's take TrustWap here. TrustWap, they currently, if you stake your swap tokens, there's no KYC, right? But if you want to participate in a pre-sale, then you have to do the KYC per pre-sale basis. So whenever you do one pre-sale, you have to do the KYC for that uh, pre-sale. But I think they can easily just add a, uh, KYC process in staking the swap tokens as well. And I don't think they will be that much uh, harmed. But XIO, for example, that can be a little bit different because the leader, uh, I think he is from United States. So I'm not exactly sure where he's from, but I think he is from the United States and uh, he has a like a public name already out there. So he could get into trouble if they don't apply to the KYC requirements and if DeFi projects will be classified as money service businesses. So I do believe a lot more regulation is coming into place and these DeFi protocols out there, I don't think they can do it if they are in the United States. So I think another unintended consequence, I didn't know, I don't remember if I said it already, is just that the development and innovation will go outside the United States. I think that will happen as well because hiring people from United States, it just creates more issues for you as well. Anyways, uh, yeah, this could have some problems, these different DeFi protocols out there, but I'm not sure about that. But the, at least the prices are not falling right now. But I can say I'm still a little bit scared to go into DeFi projects currently. Uh, so I don't know, Ethereum, it's an institutional investor tool. I'm buying a lot of Ethereum right now. Uh, so that's probably one of the things that I will be heavily investing into, but uh, I will have to do massive uh, portfolio rebalancing because uh, for the last two, three days, I actually went up to 35% in stable coins in expectance of a drop in prices. So uh, I'm currently at 25% in stable coins. So I will do ha a lot of rebalancing. I did sell my XIO, XIO tokens actually yesterday. So I went out from that, but I'm still holding my trust swap. I'm still holding uh, my band tokens, band protocol, as well as uh, uh, I do hold SXP, but I'm actually planning to sell it because they just didn't let my uh, thing go through. So I cannot get the swipe card for now. 
I don't know, it's been almost five days now. All, all, all week I've been waiting for them to reply like, okay, you can get the slave card now, but I haven't been able to do it. So I'm actually selling my SXP currently. Uh, so uh, yeah, not exactly impressed. Another thing I did not sell is Orion Protocol, but this is another one of those that could get into trouble because what they currently, or what their plan is, is that you own your private keys, right? And you have your money on the Orion uh, protocol terminal, but they actually actually aggregate the trades on multiple exchanges. And how they plan it before is that they only do the KYC on the, uh, like the brokers who are actually executing the trades so you don't personally don't have to do a kyc on an exchange but they can aggregate like binance and every other exchange out there as well as they will aggregate decentralized exchanges to get you the best rates on the uh, orion protocol terminal and you can do the limit swaps and so forth but i don't think they can i don't think they will be that, that will fly with the government i think they will have to add a kyc in their system uh if they want to comply and i think they have some us based uh people working on the protocol as well so they could get into trouble if they don't add kyc there so i do think they may have to pivot their project into a kyc project after all uh, if this law gets passed so those are some uh, speculation there uh price is still not falling uh but i'm centralizing my portfolio quite a bit right now just because i want to be on the institutional side because that's where the industry is currently going into the uh, institutional side so those are the kind of coin coins that i'm looking forward to more than the decentralized stuff currently anyway uh that's pretty much it for the video if you want to give the feedback to the government you still have 15 days so don't forget to give your feedback to them uh, you can also give the feedback to me but the most effective way is to actually give it to the, uh, them as well Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Consider subscribing and I will see you on the next video.